sorrowful The future looks bleak Remember our childhood To get us through the week We're getting re-enthused Back to the past and the things we used We all know that our pasts were great Escaping the things that today we hate Getting re-enthused Getting re-enthused Getting re-enthused Getting re-enthused Hello and welcome to Reinfused. Now, today, well, we've got three devices here. Uh, as you can probably see from the front there, NEC's PC Engine range. But we're really only concentrating on this one, which is the LT. Um, but there is a reason why the other two are there. Because uh, they're all obviously related other than just being PC Engines. Um, if you can see, this is the original kind of... Uh, PC Engine offering. Uh, it's a lovely little device, one of my personal favourites. Uh, and you see it's a very similar dimensions to that, other than the width. Um, and that's basically because these are very related. And then here we have the GT, which is the proper portable solution from NEC. Uh, has an absolutely terrible screen. It genuinely is terrible. Very bad. Um, but it's, uh, it's still a pretty good handheld. The plays all the games that all of the other Turbo uh, graphics PC Engine machines use. Um, and the battery life is actually, isn't actually terrible. It's a couple of two, three hours, four I think on, on, on a push. So uh, not bad at all, really. Um, but the LT. So if we open up the LT, you'll see that it has a screen and it's actually a very good screen as well it's um you'll see later I'll, I'll, put up a, I'll put a video on showing the screen um so you'll see that and you'll think well hey that's pretty good it's basically the portable version of this not really there's a reason why i said this was the proper portable thing and that's because this has no way of being used away from a plug socket uh there's no battery uh, I mean, I guess you could use a, an external battery system, but certainly built in, there's no battery. Uh, you have to use the power lead to power it. Uh, so it's really just kind of a more a convenient way of playing PC Engine games rather than a portable way of playing it. Uh, it's a real shame because it's, um, like I said, a very good screen and it's, uh, plays again all of the normal um, Hue cards that the other PC Engine range used. Now, it's not just that it's not just uh, it's not literally just a kind of uh, core graphics with a screen and that's it. it it also includes a few extra well I guess um, add-ons that uh, make it more interesting now the GT range the proper handheld range were capable of being turned into a TV using a TV tuner much like a lot of the handhelds at the time like the Game Gear also had that uh, and uh, this was basically this little device used to plug in the side and it would lay the tune in and the television. This has got this built in. So if we look at the back there, you see the aerial for it. And there's a little switch here that actually turn between games and television. Now there's no point that being there anymore because we obviously don't have analog television pretty much anywhere anymore. So not in the UK, so it doesn't really show anything except snow, which again you'll see later. But it's it's interesting that they they kind of took that from the, the GT line to make the LT as well. Uh, the other thing this has got is uh, on the back of the these ones you've got this expansion slot. It's a very useful expansion slot. It puts off a lot of um, pins like uh, video and stuff and also lets you plug in the CD add-ons. Well, even though this is kind of like designed to be a device you move around, it's got the exact same expansion slot. So you can use all the same expansions and you can plug the CD system into there. It's even got the power leads in the same place as well, so you can use the pass-through power that the CD's got. So it's a genuinely amazing device. Um, insanely rare, but amazing all the same. What we'll do is we'll put a game on the screen and we'll record from the screen uh, 
which is obviously never a great thing, but this doesn't really have any way of doing TV out. I mean, we can, like I say, you can get video out of the expansion slots. There are all ways of doing it, uh, but it's much easier just to video the screen to show you how good the screen is, and then we'll do some gameplay footage, but we'll take that probably from a, a PC engine or a probably the Turbo Graphics Duo, to be fair, because it's just easier. So we'll do that. Right, back in a bit. Okay, so uh, we've got the LT on, we've got Rastan Saga in, as you can see from the screen. Um, don't know if you've played before, but it's, uh, it's, a, it's quite a nice arcade slash em up game. Um, I'm a bit of a fan of it. Uh, now we have to give this run button a bit of a push, because it's uh, kind of like in these rubbery push buttons and it requires a fair whack to get it going. Right. There we go. So jump and stay on it. Right. Uh, yeah, it's fairly kind of standard fare. That was a power up. So now I've got a giant sword. Well, I mean, it's not actually helping though. Now what I could have done, and what I was actually aiming to do and, and missed, if I'm honest, is you can grab that rope and you can just basically slide over them. Oh, some bigger things. Um, yeah, so, I mean, effectively that's kind of the idea. You're attacked by lots of bad guys and you just have to kind of survive. Um, it's not. It's a nice game, it's got quite, especially for the, for the time, very big sprites. Quite nice music, although that's... Um, kind of a hallmark of the PC Engine really, the, it did have some really nice music. Uh, part of the reason why it was so good at arcade conversions was because of that combination of the graphics and the music. Okay, so I'm doing terribly there, so what we're going to do is, uh, we're just going to turn it off. Now, if we look at the side of the LT, focus. Uh, there's a switch here which lets you turn to the TV mode. Now, as I said, obviously we won't be able to pick up any TV channels here because uh, in the UK we no longer have analog channels, but I can turn it on, so there we've got rest down. But if I switch that across, there we go, you see. Now, you've probably seen this quite a lot. Well, unless you're really young, of course. <laughs> then this is the an untuned snow, and there's a couple of buttons over in the corner where you can tune it in, but again, obviously, there's not a great deal we can do with that because there won't be any channels on. But still, it's kind of a cool thing. And then we switch that back on again. So, yeah, I mean, it's it's a, it's a lovely little machine. Um, very hard to get hold of because uh, it's a very niche product and obviously didn't sell that well. Uh, and NEC had this habit of just kind of throwing lots of different variations of the PC engine out there. Uh, like there's, I mean, there's so many versions of the, of the base machine, um, even if you ignore the European and American versions, the, the Turbo Graphics versions. Um, and they didn't really make that many advancements. The Super Graphics really was the only advance that they made on this line. And that really, all that did was kind of increase the graphics power a little bit, increase the number of sprites somewhat. So, yeah, it's a shame, I guess. It's an interesting idea, but it doesn't really achieve anything as it is because the idea of just being able to take a machine around with you, then plug it in when you get somewhere and play it, it's it's kind of interesting, but it's not one you really feel is, is utterly useful to the point where that's what you'd use as your main machine. But again, the screen is quite nice. Um, I don't know how well it's going to come out on the camera, but it's it's very clear. Uh, if you we'll, we'll do now, we'll, we'll shine some light on the screen because this is the this is basically the weakness of all the screens of this era. Is that as soon as you hit light on it, then it instantly goes invisible. But this one, as you can see, is nice and it doesn't rely on reflection to give you your picture. So that means you can play it outside. Although, again, technically not possible because you uh, didn't have that built-in battery ability. Yeah, um, still a lovely machine and I, I'm genuinely glad that we've got it. Um, but it's not one you'll find regularly and when you do find it, 
it will certainly cost quite a lot of money. Uh, if you don't mind, if you really don't mind just digging inside the machines and replacing capacitors and things like that, or fixing broken tracks, then you can aim at getting ones that are marked as not working because as long as someone hasn't gone in and stolen bits from it, it's probably repairable, unless it's really had um, major calamity inside. Uh, and it does share a lot of parts with the GT and also the main PC engine, so you can get donor parts relatively simply. Right, well, that's it. Thanks for watching. Um, I might tack on some uh, extra gameplay on the end. In fact, I probably will, because any excuse to play the games on the PC Engine I'll take because it's genuinely my favourite uh, console. Uh, it's just so many fantastic games, especially arcade conversions on it. Um, and the shoot 'em ups especially because that's uh, one of my favourite genres of game are the shoot 'em ups and I think the PC Engine personally I think has got the best selection of shoot 'em ups of any other platform. But that's it for this part anyway. Uh, again, thanks for watching. Uh, if you liked, then please hit like. If you really liked, then please hit subscribe. If you didn't like, then just tell us why. Goodbye.
more time packs. Oh, okay. 